You can skip the news! Splatoon 3 looks like it'll be the best Splatoon game. I played this Splatfest premiere and it was a ton of fun, especially the part where my team won. Rock and roll! I've previously made two videos where I listed a ton of features I thought Splatoon 3 would need to be a good game. So I've taken the entries from those lists and put them into three categories. Confirmed, deconfirmed, and yet to be confirmed. I've gone through the trailers, the direct, the treehouse, the website, the tweets for all the info, the data mines, the demo, but of course there's a possibility I overlooked something, so let me know if I missed anything in the comments. Confirmed. A lot of this stuff has already been covered in the direct and website, but for the sake of completeness and reminders, I'll breeze through it here. New weapons, maps, clothes, and songs. 12 maps at launch, 5 brand new maps, 4 maps from Splatoon 2, and 3 maps from Splatoon 1 that weren't in Splatoon 2. So for most players, that's like brand new maps. And if the other Splatoon 1 maps are like Mahi Mahi was in the Splatfest, that was nothing like the original. That was just a brand new map. Plus, they've shown my favorite map, Thunder Heights, from Splatoon 1, and a Pyramid one for future updates. I personally hope that every map for the first two games gradually comes back, or at least almost every map like in Smash Ultimate. Some people don't want every map, and I get where they're coming from, maps change in each mode, and there's a lot to learn. But I disagree. I want to be buried in content like I'm being smothered by Lady Dimitrescu's ENORMOUS no PERSONALITY. Piece. Updates will be continued for two years, but according to the website, every three months new weapons and gear will be added. In Splatoon 1, weapons were added every week. Some Sometimes, multiple times per week. In Splatoon 2, it was every Friday for a while, then it switched to the beginning of each month. In Splatoon 3, it'll be every three months, which I think is lamer if they do it that way. I don't know if there will still be small weekly updates or exclusively bulk updates once a season. One of every weapon from Splatoon 2 will be available at the start. I'm pretty sure? Some are getting slight visual redesigns to help stand out from similar looking ones. My number one big boy, the Trisauce, now looks like it's from Roblox, and, and that's okay, but they gave it Toxic Mist and Inkjet, probably my least favorite summon special, but it, it's fine, it's new. They got new weapons like the bow and the windshield wipers. They'll get a bunch of variants, you can sort of see some in the store. I don't fully understand how to be good with them yet, but I'll try them out more and let y'all know. New specials, Tacticooler, Wave Breaker, Metal Gear Crab, Big Bubbler, Blahaj Akira. Spider-Man! Specials reworked from the first game, Triple Ink Zooka, Triple Ink Strike, Triple and then some Killer Whale, and some returning specials from Splatoon 2, Ultra Stamp and Booyah Bomb, which I assume they were previews of Splatoon 3 stuff in Splatoon 2 given that they were barely on any weapons before, Ink Jet, Ink Storm, Splashdown is maybe in the single player, Tenna Missiles are coming back and it made everyone have a meltdown, I swear to god I'm being gassed right now. 2017, Tenna Missiles suck, 2018, Tenna Missiles suck, 2019, Tenna Missiles suck, 2020, Tenna Missiles suck, 2021, Tenna Missiles suck, 2022, Tenna Missiles are broken and I hate them. What? Some people are saying that certain specials already need a nerf, but I think part of it is that we're all still used to Splatoon 2 specials that were all easily counterable. I used my special and died immediately. What a great game! So the meta often revolved around everyone charging their specials and unleashing them all at once. Which was fine, I guess, but y'all ain't remember Splatoon 1. Remember how Ink Zooka could get kills from across the map? Remember how Killer Whale was an instant win button on Port Mackerel? Remember how Echo Locator? Remember how Bubbler was an instant win button on Tower Control? Remember how Kraken was an instant win button in every situation, in every mode? So yeah, the specials in Splatoon 3 seem, uh, what's the word, uh, good and useful. But I think at this point, it's too early to say that Capri Sun needs a nerf. We'll have to wait and see how the meta evolves and how good the main sub and special combination of every weapon kit is. There's new clothes, obviously, but the catalog system drives me up a wall. Assuming I'm reading this correctly, Every three months, new stuff will be introduced, but the old stuff will be taken away permanently. Or at least for the foreseeable future, it'll probably come back around eventually, way later. Better buy the game at launch and never take a break from playing it so our online lobbies will have players or else you'll miss out on the content you already paid money for!
new songs obviously, some are remixes of older tracks, and some straight up might be from the first game. So for a lot of people, that's brand new music. Splatfest is returning, obviously. Single player hero mode looks maybe improved, at least better than Splatoon 2's hero mode. Seems like a mix between hero mode and Octo Expansion, but probably easier than Octo Expansion. And apparently you can skip levels. Hopefully you don't have to keep repeating levels to unlock hero weapons, for example, because that was not fun. And from the looks of it, the new trio will show up and there will be story cutscenes during the campaign instead of only bookending it. Playable Octolings at launch, hairstyles and pants aren't gender locked, which is great. You can skip the news and listen to it instead while walking around. Only took seven years! There's things to do while waiting for battles, you can practice in the training area and look back on previous matches, and the training area seems better than the previous games. I was hoping for a dick around with friends mode and you sort of can in the training area with their 10 frames per second holograms, and you can do recon mode with friends, so that's that's pretty much it. Stuff on the phone app is available in the game, I'm pretty sure. You can see previous match results in game, you can see your deaths on the victory screen. I wish you could see assists separately from kills though. You can recon any map at any time, you can do stamina run all the time, your clothes will still get ability chunks all the time even if the slots are full. There's no true quick play mode, but in anarchy battles, if I'm understanding this correctly, you gain points in open mode and then you wager them in series to rank up. So you can stick to open and wager nothing and just play the rank modes for fun if you want. There's a replay mode like in Mario Kart 8 that lets you rewatch previous matches. Splatoon is finally catching up to Halo 3. 15 years ago, all right. Loadouts can be saved as fresh as fits without amiibo. Wish you could do more than five, but it's better than zero. I'm not sure if using amiibo gives you extra slots or if it'll be the same slots just saved to your little doll. There's more stuff to spend your in-game money on, like car battle cars, locker decorations, splash tags, poses. Gotcha. Harmony has seen some things. There's not dedicated servers, of course not, but they are using a new net code to connect players, which is apparently the same one they use for Monster Hunter Rise. I've played a little bit of Monster Hunter Rise and I haven't had any major connection issues. However, that is a co-op game, so I'm not really looking at the other players. There's a better photo mode and it's not locked behind having an amiibo this time around. Achievement system at the end of each battle and achievements with each weapon to encourage players to try new things. Platoon 2 save data bonus. You get to have three weapons for free at the start and your rank at the start will get a little boosty if you're higher rank in Splatoon 2. Deconfirmed, features that I wanted that are not in the game. Stuff can be patched later, but I'm not gonna hold my breath with these. Layered armor, fashion gear, basically you can easily have the look of one thing and the abilities of another. Instead, it looks like you can change the main ability of gear without having to order through the phone app, but it'll still probably take a lot of chunks. Doesn't look like there's any sort of local split screen mode, or two player split screen online, or five player salmon run, or more chat options other than this way and booyah. And the tick rate is not any better, it's it's the same pathetically slow tick rate as Splatoon 2's pathetically slow tick rate. Great! Unconfirmed slash TBD. This stuff is too early to tell. If you're watching this in the future, let me know what I got right and wrong. Unique Splatfest maps like Splatoon 2 had. I'd be surprised if they're not here, but at time of writing I haven't seen anything about it. If they do come back, A, let us have the new map in private battles as soon as the Splatfest is over instead of releasing all of them years later, and B, let us play ranked modes on these maps in private battles instead of just Turf War. Stage builds are using the Splatfest map assets. Probably not. I guess Splatoon is not catching up to Halo 3 15 years ago on older hardware. Room codes will be added in the future, but not at launch, even though many, many other Nintendo games have it. I'm losing my mind. And it looks like it might be using some weird hashtag system to join people. No, babe, please just use numbers. There's no dedicated dance button, but you can choose more victory poses. So that's something. More options in private battles. There is a more settings option, but they don't show what's there, so. Eh? Hopefully there will be a kick button and or a random weapon option and or silly modes and private battles will level you up and give you cash. The online of the Splatfest premiere worked pretty well overall, but was kind of weird. You could set a password, but then we couldn't figure out where we were supposed to actually input the password to join. Maybe we just missed it though. User interface options. I didn't see it. Sound volume slider. I didn't see it. A music frequency toggle. I doubt it. Custom loadouts and private battles where you can use any something special with any weapon. I highly doubt 
without it. A second ranked room. They are adding league battles alongside anarchy battles with friends. I don't know how those two will be any different. More amiibo support. Looks like they'll do the same thing as in Splatoon 2 and only compatible with Splatoon amiibo. You can order unique stuff through the phone app. Hopefully you can also order these things through the game too because it's absolutely baffling that a game largely marketed towards kids also has features unnecessarily locked behind having a smartphone. This is silly man design. Crossover. Still too early to tell. Feels like it's a no-brainer for a popular online game where you dress up, but we'll see. But so far there's been no sign of any Mario Sunshine content. Big missed opportunity there. Third playable species. Who knows? Maybe with DLC or with the mammalians. A new mode. There's card battle. I'm not sure if there's a group photo mode outside of taking photos with everyone's hologram in the training area or in the group recon mode. Custom shirts like an Animal Crossing. No sign of them, but I doubt it. Minimap option. Didn't see it, but I doubt it. Phone app map. I doubt it. Boss to fill in private lobbies or replace disconnected players. I doubt it. In fact, sometimes when there was a disconnect, the entire match would stop for everyone. Hopefully that stays in the premiere because that is silly man design. New single player mode. Will most likely be the DLC they hinted at. Octo expansion square. So 64 expansion with N64s in the background this time. And the biggest thing I was hoping for was a killer app for Splatoon 3 at launch. Going back to iteration versus innovation, feels like they made a thousand tiny improvements to Splatoon 2. And those improvements are extremely appreciated. But I wish there was something I could easily point at and go, this is what makes Splatoon 3 unique, other than card battle. That being said, do I think this will be the best Splatoon game? Yes. Am I looking forward to playing the game? Yes. And is there some new stuff to this game? Sure. There's three-way Splatfest with 4v2v2 battles. Lockers to decorate. Which, Vic Vion, are like mini apartments, especially for someone your size. Card... <sighs> Card battle. Salmon Run has optional bonus bosses and new boss salmonids. Big grind to play Salmon Run on regular maps. Weapon kits are all new and the subs and specials complement the main weapon well. There's titles and achievements, character models are improved, ranked battle is different, but a lot of these are improvements to existing modes or small side content. Not anything major that I didn't expect. But of course, Splatoon isn't quite a live service game, thank goodness that would be terrible, but it is an ongoing game that receives plenty of updates. So we'll have to wait and see what the future holds. Anyways, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to swing your Splatana into that subscribe button. Comment below with how you think Splatoon 3 looks. And today's comment code word is Salmon. Comment Salmon if you made it all the way through the video. And uh, that's it. Video's over.